Hey everyone, it's Frankie Lou. I'm coming to you today from the High Tunnel at the Golden Homestead, where I wanted to discuss a little bit about companion planting with you today. Because I know the term companion planting can be quite confusing and it's not about relationships, like one plant likes another plant more. It's more about how these plants can work together to maximize your garden space and also the resiliency of your crops. So I'm going to show you here of one of the most um, celebrated companion plant combos that's around and that's the three sisters method. Now the three sisters method has been used in North America by first peoples for millennia. And here's an example of how well it can work here. First of the sisters is corn. We have corn here growing up. And as you can see, this is doing really well. It's got a nice strong stalk. Next to it is growing some beans. These are scarlet runner beans. And they are going to use this stalk, and they already are starting to use the stalk, as a support. And they're going to continue growing up the stalk. This, the, at the same time that they're using that corn stalk for support, they're also feeding the corn because pole beans are a wonderful nitrogen fixer. So they are helping this corn to stay nice and healthy. And then right here at the base of that, we have a lovely squash plant. And that plant is also going to use this corn to grow in, in its space here. <laughs> but um, the dense growth and the broad leaf of the squash plant is also going to provide both these other plants with almost like a living mulch that's going to help to retain the moisture that's in the soil here. I find that when I grow plants together densely like this, there's so many benefits. One, I'm getting three crops in the same space. I would normally only get one. So that is a really good use of maximizing your garden space. Another thing is, is while it may seem counterintuitive, when you plant densely like this, you actually use less water because the, the leaves that are spreading out and around are acting like a living mulch and stopping excess evaporation. Now, those aren't the only plants that are growing in here. I'm using this whole space as a companion planting scenario. If we come over here, you may not recognize this plant. It is a very, very common garden plant. This is a radish. And I'm actually using the radish here to help attract pollinators to the other plants, all these different squash that are growing in here. Radish, um, while you can just harvest one single root from the plant, if you allow it to grow up like this, it's, it's a very, very beneficial companion plant because not only do these beautiful, tasty, <laughs> well, they are good, tasty little flowers attract pollinators, they also help to deter the squash beetles. So as you can see, that's a super beneficial plant and they are delicious. These will produce seed pods soon, which I will be able to harvest and, and use as well. And then another great companion plant for this particular grouping is nasturtiums. Nasturtiums are wonderful. They are edible all parts. I like to use the seeds from the flowers to produce um, sort of a makeshift caper, but this will also act as a living mulch and it acts as an aphid trap. Aphids love nasturtiums and if you plant these with plants that are often attacked by aphids, they will prefer to eat the nasturtiums. The nasturtium flowers, when they start, will bring pollinators, but they are also going to um, help to keep the aphids away from the other plants here. Well, I've got some lettuce growing in here as well, acting as a living mulch also. Here, you can see that I've got some beautiful sunflowers that are going to um, be coming up. Sunflowers are often referred to as the fourth sister in the three sisters companion planting method. Another thing I have going on here, peas. We have some beautiful peas. They are also an excellent nitrogen fixer, so they're good for um, providing shade because as you can see they do grow up nice and tall, so they're also helping to keep it from getting too hot in here and they are helping to nitrogen fix the soil. So planting densely is one of the reasons why I love companion planting because we're maximizing the space. Another one of the major reasons I love it is every year the garden harvests differently. There are some years where my beans will be off the chain and then the next year there's nothing for beans. If you're planting three or four different crops in the same space and you have a crop failure, 
which I hate to say is bound to happen every now and then, you're not wasting this entire space. You're still gonna manage to get some decent harvests from the other plants that you're planting in the same companion plot. Another reason why I love it is, as I said, with that whole pest control. So a lot of the things that we think of as pretty little garden flowers are actually super, super helpful for pest control. Marigolds. You often see marigolds mixed in with vegetable garden plots. And one of the reasons for that is it's a wonderful pest deterrent and a pollinator attractant. So having these pretty little flowers in here isn't just a fri frivolous thing. They're actually super beneficial to your garden. I have other examples that I can show at another time of various um, companion plant combos that we use, but I thought this was a good one to show today because it is doing so well. So maybe if you haven't tried this method before, Hopefully this might convince you to give it a try next time you do a garden plot. Feel free to send me questions. I will be sharing more of this wonderful garden space. Also, I hope you'll take this chance to grow together today. Have a good one.